This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Making a guided edit is probably one of the most easy things you can do in the program. It takes you step by step through everything you need to do to correct your photo or alter your photo if that's what you're looking for. For this image, what I would like to do is adjust the brightness and contrast. So I look in the guided edit display and I see brightness and contrast. So I click it. Everything changes to give me only the features available for editing brightness and contrast. This makes it really easy to focus only on this specific edit I wanna make. But what if I'm not sure exactly what brightness and contrast does? Well, very easy. First of all, the two sliders, brightness and contrast, are explained. They tell me exactly what they do. I also have the ability to make auto brightness and contrast adjustments. Many of the tonal corrections and color corrections have an auto feature. You can press it, and the program will automatically adjust your image for you. I'm going to reset because it's not really what I want to do. What I would like to do is have a little more control. So the brightness of the image makes the image lighter or darker. And I would like to make this image a little darker. Now, contrast is the variation between dark and light areas of an image. I would like to increase the contrast by taking the slider to the right. And you'll notice as I'm doing that, we'll see a little pop-up telling me the value. And what it does is it changes the variation between the darkest and lightest areas. So it makes the lighter areas more different from the darker areas. So it makes the lighter areas lighter and the darker areas darker. This allows things like, in this case, the bird to stand out and pull forward, while other things, like the tree, are pushed back. They become duller. Lots of fun. Now, what happens if you decide this isn't what you want to do? You don't want a brightness and contrast effect. It's not really what you were going for. Not a problem. You have two buttons at the bottom of the Guided Edit panel. Cancel and Done. Done applies your changes. Cancel cancels the operation. So I'm going to press Cancel right now. And it returns me back to the Guided Edit menu, the full Guided Edit display. Perhaps I decide I'd like to enhance the colors of my image. So color correction, enhance colors. Once again, there's an auto mode. I can also see that there's a hue, saturation, and lightness sliders. I wonder what those do. Well, luckily the program tells me. Hue changes the colors used in the photo. It would allow me to shift to another range of colors. It's literally taking all of the colors in the image and shifting them, in this case, towards purple. Now that might be very interesting, but not what I'm looking for, so I'm gonna press reset. I don't wanna shift the colors in the image. I just wanna intensify the ones that are already there. Well, that's saturation. I'm gonna raise the saturation value, and you'll notice that the colors become brighter and more intense. Lightness simply allows you to change the lightness, the amount of black in the colors, like so. I'm gonna return that back to normal because it really desaturates an image and it really dulls the colors. I really like the saturated effect. Now, this may not be the most realistic photograph in the world. Perhaps the colors are a little too saturated. But that's the beauty of Photoshop Elements. I don't have to try to simply capture life. I can enhance it. I'm going to click Cancel, because there's one last guided edit I want to show you. And it's one of the more fun ones you can create. I'm going to slide to the bottom of the display, and I'm going to go for Fun Edit's Lomo Camera Effect. Now, the Lomo Camera Effect will tell you, to an extent, what it is and what it does. Basically, a Lomo camera was a Russian plastic camera that had very good lenses. And it's one of a series of cameras used to create what's often called a toy camera effect. They're not the greatest cameras in the world, most of them aren't very expensive, but they can create some really intense, really interesting images. The Lomo effect here has two parts. One, I can cross-process my image, I can actually change the image so it looks like a Lomo camera, and I can add vignetting. So I'm going to do that. Cross process image. And there's nothing for me to do per se. The program runs through, applies its settings for Lomo camera, and you can see that it completely changes. So the colors are here much more saturated than they were. 
You can definitely see the background, that green stands out much deeper. The reddish green in the bark of the tree really pulls forward. And just to finish the effect, I don't have to apply vignetting, but I think it looks really interesting. I'll press apply vignette, and I'll end up with the dark vignetting areas around the corners. It's just the effect of some lenses, and it helps bring out the center of your image. If the details you're looking for are not in the center of your image, then don't apply vignetting. It really does only affect the center. Now I like that, and I'm going to press done. And that's going to finish my guided edit. I'm just going to click to return to full edit mode. And you can see that what happened is instead of editing the original photograph, the original background layer of the photo, Lomo effect was added above it. So if I click in the layers panel, the eye icon for Lomo effect, you'll notice that the background, the original image that was here is still present. Nothing we're doing here is going to permanently change the original image. It's added on top of the image. There's a principle in working with Photoshop Elements. Whenever possible, Photoshop Elements, and for that matter, most Adobe applications, really try to avoid editing your original pixels, the original parts of your image. Whenever possible, Photoshop Elements, instead of editing your original image, simply tries to add new layers to enhance or add additional features to your image. In this way, you can always return to your original whenever you want to. I'm gonna click on the Lomo Effect layer again to apply it. And I'd like to save this file. File Save As. You'll notice that the name it's automatically added is Chris Carter 9 underscore edited one. Now, the original file was a Photoshop document. This one will be as well. I specify that from the format Photoshop. Technically, if you wanted to, you could save it as something else, but the Photoshop format saves the layers and it saves all the changes you've made. The other formats like JPEG or TIFF flatten your image and you'll lose your editability. If you look in the features that are being saved, saving layers, it's gonna add this image to the Elements Organizer. And the next one is what I find really extremely helpful. A version set allows you to create a set or a group of images based off of an original one. So your original image is edited in Photoshop. Instead of overwriting the original, it adds a second image and then groups them together in the organizer so that you can know the relationship between images. This way you can always return to images along any stage of editing. The color profile is simply the description. It's a technical feature. It's the description of how the colors in your image are being displayed. I'm just gonna press save. I'm then gonna close the file, file close and it jumps back to the organizer, and you can see that the organizer now has a stack feature. I'm gonna to click to expand the stack, the version set really in this case, and I can see that the original image is on the bottom, it's actually collapsed and hidden, and the edited image, the one we just finished working with, is now the main image. This is what version sets allow you to do. I can always return back to the original. I'm not losing it. This is one of the most beautiful features of working with Photoshop Elements. You never ever have to lose your original images. I'm gonna press show all in the organizer to return to the main organizer display.